Well, good evening. Welcome to Church on the Go, our live stream service for Sunday, July 17th, 2022. It's just after 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, we know some people are watching from different time zones, so we're glad you can join us tonight. I am just going to just see how we're doing. I like to monitor this thing to make sure it's still on. We did a test earlier. We like to just see how we're doing anyways. Praise God. And... Okay, good evening, Michael. Good evening, Jenny. I see you are on there. Praise God. Welcome, welcome. Praise God. So, uh, yes, good evening, saints. Thank you, Michael. Praise God. He says good evening, saints. <laughs> Praise God. Um, great. Okay, very good. So we're going to start by praying, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Who thinks we should worship the Lord? I do. Praise Amen. God. The Lord wants worshipers. Amen. Yes, so that's great. Let us... Pray. Father, we just thank you that you are the good God thank who you, saves us, who wor we worship, we adore. Lord, you entered the closed room after your resurrection. Yes. You Lord. entered a locked room in your resurrected body and you said, Peace to you. Lord, you actually told Mary, I'm going to ascend to my God and your God, to my yes. Father and your Father. And how is it that we could be able to call God Father? It's because Jesus finished the work on the cross. Yes, Lord. Lord, the work was finished on the cross. We can call you Father now. And we receive the Spirit of your Son, the Holy Spirit, and He becomes our uh, indwell the, the indwelling Spirit within us. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So thank you, Father. And uh, now we ask that you would lead and guide us, lead and guide those that are, are watching from afar, those of us that are, the two of us that are here in this house, Lord. And, let it all be for your glory, Lord. We honor and bless you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you'll by, no, most of you know by now, we have the little buzzing noise. That's the air conditioning. We're very thankful in July for air conditioning. <laughs> Praise God. With 28, 30, 30 degree weather, Celsius that is, for you Americans, that's somewhere in, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, <laughs> but it's hot, okay? Just take our word for it. Um, uh, but we are... Um, also going to have the, if you, uh, I think on, on, a, on a tablet or a phone, you can swipe to see the overview description on your, on your tablet or phone. On a desktop, you should be able to see the description for the links that we use, lyrics and teaching graphics. So uh, feel free to click on the link for the lyrics and you can follow along with the appropriate song if you would like. Those of you who like to play instruments, feel free to play along with us. I'll give, us, I'll give you the key that we are singing in and uh, we will go from there, praise God. Uh, we're going to start with Take Us to the River, Robin Mark song. Uh, we need to go there in unity, amen? amen? We need to go there as part of a Christian fellowship. Amen. Did you know that going to church is God is taking us somewhere? Amen. amen. In the spirit. So praise God. Uh, this is the key of D. D is in David. Amen. D is in David. So feel free to follow along with us. Take us to the river. Take us there in unity. Oh, 
checking up on them. Praise God. Very good. Praise God. Amen. Very good. But Jenny says she loves the spontaneous song, so praise God. Sing along with us, praise God. I'm glad you enjoy it. We need more people to sing spontaneously right. to the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit can give you a song too. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go on to our next song, Preach the Kingdom. And uh, uh, I've explained this before, but it's based. the verse up here is based on Matthew 10 and 7, and also Matthew 12 and 28. And then the chorus is based on is our response to what Jesus has taught us to do. Amen. So we are going to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let's let's pre praise God tonight. Amen. Amen. Oh yes, and this is the key of G. We are end up on G, but we start on the relative E minor. All right, praise God. Oh, 
Spirit of God. I believe that's in Romans 8. Praise God. Amen. And uh, so praise God. We are still doing well on there. Praise God. Amen. Okay, good. So. Praise God. Sorry, guys. I put the wrong one on my folder here. I'll just get it out of here. Not by my. There it is. So. We're in the key of G. Start on C though. Oh, 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 oh,
church and the 10 waves of persecution they've been and they they endured right. in the pagan Rome right. most of the churches that are written about in the New Testament were part of Asia Minor or that area of Turkey where uh, Rome had supreme authority at that time right. so we're got we're going through what the early church experienced through Fox's book of martyrs I'm reading the abridged version so it's a little bit easier English to understand and uh, so not everybody understands the these and the that, right? <laughs> so, but it, it, it's still valuable yeah. to understand where we came from in our faith yeah. so that we can look forward and understand that the body of Christ is more than just what we see on the earth. It's also in heaven. Sadly, the majority of Christians today aren't aware of Fox's book of Martyrs. No, they're not. No. So we, was, they need, we need to bring back the history. Yeah, it was written in the 1600s. Yeah, it was. And it's so important that we understand 
where we came from. So anyways, we're sharing that in-house on the 19th. Praise God. Praise God. Then of course we've got Brother Joe sharing and uh, God willing later in the week we'll have a, a, a August calendar to share with you. Yep. Um, and it's already up actually. On, on the Facebook, yeah. You Facebook. can check it up on Facebook. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we'll uh, move along to, uh, let's, let's just put this, uh, this one this, of the body of Christ. Uh, yeah, then we've got the body of Christ. Uh, it's it's take me two larger, tries for every graph of larger uh, rendition of yeah. uh, what's on the calendar. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. So, uh, we have been sharing about Christian fellowship, uh, and uh, I was sharing about that this morning. We want to try and move along. Tonight, we're going on to some additional uh, thoughts on Christian fellowship. Um, you know, when we talk about the word Christian, the word Christian was first used in Acts 11.26. And, um, you know, it can mean in the original uh, Greek, I can actually give you the Strong's for that, uh, Christianos, it's in um, the Strong's 55.46. Uh, it actually means disciples, students, um, followers of Christ. But um, it is uh, the root word there is uh, Christos, which is the uh, Christ the Anointed One. And um, when we think of Christ the Anointed One, we as Christians become anointed ones because uh, we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, right? And uh, and so when I looked it up in Mr. Zodiati's um, uh, uh, lexicon, he basically says here that the anointed ones are acting as redeemers. Amen. So we're participating in the act of redemption because we're sharing the kingdom of God, as we were talking about going out. That's right. The kingdom. That's right? it. Yeah. Praise God. There's the best. So, so that uh, gives you a little bit of background on the word Christian, on the word fellowship comes from the Greek word koinonia. It actually means uh, partnership, communion, uh, fellowship, relationship together. So uh, we've been talking about Christian fellowship and tonight we want to carry on and talk about the release and reception of the governor in the kingdom of God. Now uh, let's just, uh, I will look at one passage that I looked at this morning and then we'll, we'll move along here. Uh, we're going to go to First uh, John chapter 1, and we're going to read down through, it's a short chapter, 10 verses, and four times the word koinonia is used, the Greek word koinonia is used. So First John. Uh, first John chapter 1. Yep, First John chapter 1. And uh, it's 10 verses long, and yep. uh, four times uh, the word koinonia is used in relationship to fellowship. We have fellowship with one another, and we have fellowship uh, horizontally with one another and vertically with Christ, right? Amen. So, uh, if you'd like to read it there, Mr. Yes, Mr. here it comes. Chris. So here we go, First John chapter 1. Read, read along, well, it's only 10 verses, follow yeah. along with us. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you. That God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and that the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Amen. Amen. So this morning, as you see the last little bit there, verse 6, it says uh, that it's talking about if we are fellowship with 
to say we have fellowship with him and walking in darkness. We do not practice the truth. So I was talking about practicing the truth. Right. Some people can't handle the truth, but yes. we have to learn as believers to practice the truth. Right. right? And, uh, and so I was holding up my fingers here, for those of you that were watching online, as Curtis was mentioning, the four times the word fellowship appears. appears twice in verse 3. Uh, it says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. In other words, this message is being passed on generationally from John, who is there with Jesus in the first generation, to us today, right? He's declaring it to us uh, that you also may have fellowship with us. So that's the horizontal area of fellowship, right? And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the vertical, right? Yeah, that's right. So that's the, the picture of the cross, right? Yeah, the horizontal and the vertical. Absolutely. Then it appears again in verse 6 and then again in verse 7. Fourth one is in 7. So uh, if you say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. It's important that we practice the truth in our lives. Yeah. You now some people are cultural Christians. They just call themselves Christians. So I'm Christians. And it's like, you know, but some of them call themselves Protestants or Catholics, you know, or, or, or even Orthodox. But they're not right? practicing Christians. Yeah, but they're, they're you know, I, mean, just, I have a friend just... of mine in Northern Ireland, he was asking these guys, he said, so what kind of Christian are you? And I was saying, oh, I'm a Christian. So my friend Jackie asked him, so what kind of a Christian? Oh, I'm a Protestant. And uh, so Jackie said, well, uh, what do you know about Martin Luther? Oh yeah, he was that black guy that got shot down in the States. <laughs> you know, oh, you know. oh, uh, no. Meanwhile, Martin Luther was in the 1500s. It was 1517 that he nailed the 95, 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg. Wittenberg right? yeah. <laughs> Wrong Martin Luther. <laughs> yep. This one came a little earlier than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So then yeah, it's true. People don't even know why they call themselves what they. They don't no, even know what no, Protestantism yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, then he goes on. He says, uh, verse seven there. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So true fellowship isn't just relationship because we can have a relationship with all kinds of coworkers and people we, you know, we relate to at work or whatever, mm -hmm. who aren't really believers. But real fellowship happens in the light. Absolutely. Not in the dark. That's right. <laughs> now, Michael, Michael J. Goebel says, they appear to be religious, but they deny the power that could make them holy. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Amen, brother. Yeah. Absolutely, Michael. So, we agree with that. So, uh, just to continue here. So, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Then he goes on to make the point that we have sin. So the word sin is failure, right? Uh, we have fallen short of the glory of God. It's, yeah. a, it's an archery term, old archery term. Yeah. And uh, it means to fall short of the target. God had a, a, a holy law, and we're just not able to keep it up. No. Not in the flesh. Yeah. You know, yeah. try as we might, yeah. we will fail. So, you know, Jesus came in the flesh, and he conquered our failures, and he conquered... Uh, and he fulfilled, death, the, law. He fulfilled the law perfectly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else there in that chapter? That um, it, well, I was just going to say, you mentioned that if you're walking in the light, you're practicing the truth. Well, truth and light are, uh, to me, together. They're the same thing. Yeah. If you understand, like, Psalm 119 and John 17, thy word is truth. Yeah. And then over in Psalm 119, thy word is light. Yeah. Or uh, light into my light, lamp unto my feet. Yeah. Truth is light. Yeah. Yeah. If you're walking in truth, you're walking in the light. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people today react to negatively to the light, yeah, because it exposes, yeah, evil. Yeah. Well, truth or or light brings clarity. It does. And I some mean, people don't want clarity. If you go, if you go to a trial, unfortunately, all these lawyers and everybody are trying to cloud everything up. You know, they're yeah. trying to keep it shrouded in darkness, right? They're spinning in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but you're hoping that through the trial you will come to the truth, right? right. Or to the verdict, right? Yes. So, <laughs> but uh, but that requires clarity. It requires light, as you say. It sure know? does. And yep. uh, ultimately, God is the judge of all things. That's right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So, 
Thank you, Curtis. So we're talking about Christian fellowship and the release and reception of the governor in the kingdom of God. Now, the governor of the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. Um, but, uh, you know, we don't have a, 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 uh, a biblical uh, reflection of the constitutional monarchy here in Canada, but we do have a constitutional monarchy. And a constitutional monarchy is based upon a constitution, right? And the Word of God is our biblical constitution, That's right. right? It is. And with the constitutional monarchy, uh, which is different than a republic, and that is that the monarch approves a governor so we have a governor general here yep. in Canada. That's right. Um, that uh, becomes the head of state. Yeah. And and right now it's a, a lady, a First Nations lady, who is a governor general, and she she's like the queen's representative. She's the queen's representative, and uh, and she speaks on behalf of the queen. You know, if she wants, if there's something to say, uh, you know, to the government or to Canadians in general. Right. Right. So now where we're different uh, than the biblical constitutional monarchy is that uh, the government of Canada would actually submit, like Mary Simon's her name, right? So I think so. Yeah. So yeah, so she, her name would have been presented to the queen probably in a short list, right? Of, uh, you know, this is who we recommend that you choose. Well, that's the people recommending to the monarch <laughs> who to choose out of the short list, right? Well, <laughs> that's not really what we're talking about. In in a, in the biblical constitutional monarchy, the king, that is the Father God, yeah. he has chosen through his son, Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, yeah. right? That there would be a someone sent, right? So the Father's promise is that there would be a helper sent. Right. Yep. And Jesus is the one who sends the helper. Right? Yes. Sends the whole, sent the Holy Spirit. He right? promised that if he would ascend, then he would send the whole helper. The whole right. Spirit. So right now, and if you want to read a good book on this teaching, or there are there is a series of videos as well that you can see. Uh, Brother Miles Monroe, who has passed on to be with the Lord, he actually did some wonderful teaching on. Um, you know, how the Holy Spirit is the governor of the kingdom of God. Now, there are different teachings about the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, you, you could talk about the gifts of the Spirit uh, and the ministries of the Spirit. You could talk about the governor of the kingdom of God. You could talk about the symbols of the Holy Spirit and on and on and on it goes, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, tonight we want to get into talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit is the governor of the kingdom of God and he's the one that brings that fellowship together you know we're talking about the vertical and the horizontal it's the Holy Spirit that brings us together right we have mm -hmm. Christ in us the hope of glory right yes. and that brings us together in fellowship not only horizontally but vertically as well That's with right. the Lord That's right. so uh, we're going to start by going over to Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans chapter 14 Verse 17. Yeah, Romans 14 and verse 17 tells us, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Right. So, you know, a lot of people think, well, if I'm having fellowship, uh, let's go to the church having a dinner down there, and we're going to go and have some fellowship around the table, right? Right. <laughs> Well, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not based on material things, right? Well, even if it's food you're sticking in your mouth or whatever, you know. But it's based on the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. Okay, righteousness and peace. Well, who's the Prince of Peace? Jesus. Christ. Yeah. Christ is the Prince of Peace. That's right. And joy in the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. In the Holy Spirit. So we need to understand that the kingdom of God is not based on your material possessions. A lot of people get into, you know, how much your 
you're making or how much your God has given you or I've been blessed with so much and well, how well, you must be doing something wrong brother because you know he, he, well, how big yeah. is your ministry yeah like, oh yeah big how big is your church yeah what's the what's uh, you know yeah yeah whatever the, yeah. the numbers yeah the God the kingdom of God is not about the numbers no no it's no. about the righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit right right in absolute so uh, going back to uh, the beginning of the uh, New Testament. Uh, we know, okay, let me just uh, explain this. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was on loan to them. He came upon certain individuals during the Old Testament era, and uh, he anointed them to do certain tasks and missions for God. Yes. Okay? But in the New Testament, Jesus is the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. God willing, we'll get to that. And the Holy Spirit is available to whosoever will may come, right? Yes. And Amen. drink of the river of life freely. We Amen. We were singing about take us to the river. Amen. <laughs> the river is the moving of the Spirit of God. If right. you want uh, confirmation of that, uh, why don't you read, uh, I hadn't planned to look this up, but let's look at uh, John 7, 37. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jesus is at the Passover feast. And he's calling it, all you who are hungry and thirsty, come to me and drink, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and here it is. John 7 and 37 says, uh, sorry, page 737 says, on the last day of that great feast, uh, on that last day, that great day of the feast, yeah. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Carry on. Next verse. And it says, But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Right. Hello. So the Holy Spirit hadn't been given to everyone because Jesus hadn't yet been glorified. Right. But God still had the authority the supremacy of the sovereignty to use the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon whomsoever he will, right? That's right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he could still put the Spirit upon whom he chose. Yes. Yeah. But then there was a certain point after Jesus' ascension when yeah. he would fulfill Joel's prophecy that he would pour his Spirit out on all flesh. Yes, yes. Uh, and he was fulfilling Joel's prophecy, but more importantly, he was fulfilling the Father's promise. And yep. it was the promise of the Father that there would be a helper that would be sent. That's right. To help us, right? Amen. So, uh, so at any rate, um, Which was let's go over to um, John 3 and 34 there, Curtis. John 3 and By the way, if anybody online has a question, now, yeah. unfortunately, Curtis doesn't always get his questions. Yeah, I, yeah I can, sometimes I'll pop off camera and I'll look at the other okay, screen, and sometimes yeah. I can see them on there. So if any questions come up, we'll, we'll try, do our best <laughs> to respond to them, okay? Yeah. But I yeah. uh, want to move on. Uh, John 3, 34, the Holy Spirit dwelt without limit in the body of Jesus. And this is the first time, the first time in human history since Adam and Eve walking with God in the garden. Yep. The first time. Because now we have the second Adam, right? Or the last Adam. Yes. The last Adam. Uh, so the first Adam, of okay, course, walked with God in the garden. He right? did. And when they failed God, suddenly they felt naked. Well, what disappeared? The glory of God disappeared, right? Amen. And when the glory of God disappeared, they were naked. That's right. They right? discovered that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the glory of God vanished. Yeah. Off absolutely. Of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they sinned. So let's go over to John three thirty four there, Curtis. Okay. Uh, read for us here what it says there. So John three thirty four. Thirty four. says, For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. In other words, what he's saying is that God didn't give the Holy Spirit to Jesus 
just a little bit. Huh. Not by measure. In other words, not just a little bit. No, well, you can have a teaspoonful, right? <laughs> no, no. He gave the Holy Spirit without measure uh, to Jesus. And Jesus walked in the limitless power of the Holy Spirit on his earthly ministry. And uh, when he was going about healing the sick, casting out devils, Amen. he was demonstrating what is available to us. Now the only difference between Jesus and our opportunity to enter into this realm of the Holy Spirit is that Jesus never sinned. Therefore, his physical body never received the impact of failure, right? But our bodies, of course, have experienced the failure of the fall. Oh, right? absolutely. You know, but the opportunity to enter into the full realm without limit or without measure is available to us today. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you as we go through some scriptures here. Um, Let's go over to John chapter 1 and verse 16. Yeah, John chapter 16. 1 and verse 16. All right. So John chapter 1 verse 16 says, And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Yes. Amen. So there's a couple of thoughts that I wanted to share with you about this. First of all, uh, we have received his fullness. That is, without limit, the potential of everything that God has for us, right? His fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Amen. Now that word grace means favor, right? Favor for favor. Yes. And it basically means that it's a process. There's favor upon favor, because as you go on and read here, in uh, Curtis, I'll just get you... Um, to read, um, let's see here, not only, um, yeah, let's read 17 and 18 um, as well. 17 and 18? Okay. Yeah. 17 and 18 says, uh, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Right. And no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Right. So, so God is leading us, you know, uh, grace to grace, or grace by grace, or line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. He is leading us forward in the things of God, right? So it's a process that's going on. And then I mentioned this morning that, uh, you know, if uh, God was to dump everything on us, the fullness on us at one point, we'd just blow up, you know, because yeah, we couldn't handle it. Well, no, you couldn't. No. no. But all of that is available to us in, in Christ Jesus. Now, let's carry on here. Uh, let's go over to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. 1 John 4. Let's go there. That's the, one of the last books there. 1 John chapter 4. Yeah. And verse 17. Yeah. says... Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Again, two thoughts here. Love has been perfected. That's a process. Perfection is not, you know, instantaneous. It's a process for you perfected. Um, perfect, uh, sorry, that's uh, verse 18, perfect love, cast of fear. Then it goes on and says, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, as Christ is, so are we in this world. So, in other words, we have the potential to be as Christ is. Yes, okay. we do. So he had the Holy Spirit without measure. Right, well, we have the Spirit too. Yeah, without measure. Yeah. The only difference, as I say, was that Christ had a physical body that was without sin. That's right. And our bodies have been impacted. Yes, sin. there's still a consequence of sin in the, yes, in the physical yeah, body. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the so, but the opportunity is there for us to uh, have the Holy Spirit without measure. And as He is, so are we to be in, in this, this world. world. Amen. Praise God. 
So uh, Jesus yielded up his spirit, uh, or you could say he yielded up the Holy Spirit at the time of his death. And um, let's go to John 19 and 30. John 19 and 30. So John 19, 19 and 30. Only oh, this is a good one. Well, of course, but this is great. <laughs> great, great statement by Jesus. He says in John 19 and 30, yeah. he says, uh, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Right. So his spirit, well, his spirit is the spirit of Christ. Right. The Holy Spirit. Yep. Right. So he gave up the Holy Spirit at the point of his death. That's right. And the Holy Spirit went back to God. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, so let's let's see something else here. Let's go to Romans 8 and 11. Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you see that in Romans 8 and 11. Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Where are we? Romans 8 and 11. Oh, yes, Romans. Romans 8 and 11. Yeah. says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ up, Christ from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Okay, so here now we have the... This is where you get the two pieces of uh, wire coming together, so to speak. You have the whole aspect of, of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that had been given up when Christ died, now is the one who is raising him from the dead. Right? Yeah. But this same Spirit, if we have this same Spirit, the Spirit of Christ dwelling in us, the hope of glory, right? This same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead uh, will also give life your mortal bodies. The word mortal means dying bodies. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Our bodies are dying because of sin. Yeah. Jesus' body did not die because of sin. He laid it down as a sacrifice. Absolutely. Right? That's right. So uh but the the Holy Spirit will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. So if you want to find out how this works, you have to go back to verse two. You go back to verse 2 in the same chapter, Curtis. You want to read verse yeah. 2? Yeah, verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's two laws in operation, right? Yeah. There's the law of sin and death, the law of failure and death. And then there is the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Well, that that's right. law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus supersedes, Right? The law of sin and death. Amen. Amen. So that law, the law of the spirit of life, will quicken your mortal body. That's right. And Jesus raised the dead. You can raise the dead. That's right. Jesus and healed the sick. You can heal the sick. That's right. So that starts now. Yeah. You as a believer. As a believer, yeah. you, you have access to that life-giving power today. It starts with belief and faith in operating in it. That's right. Know? Yeah. Practicing the truth, as we talked about That's this right. morning. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anything you wanted to add to any of that? Up well, I was just going to say it's a now word. It's a present truth or present yeah. reality for those who believe and walk in the truth of right. Jesus Christ. So that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. So those who enter into the kingdom of God through Christ, all right, have the Spirit. We have the Spirit of God in us. And uh, let's just look at a couple of uh, passages quickly. First of all, we enter in through Christ. John chapter 10, verses 7 to 10. John chapter 10, verses 7 to 10. Yes. Jesus is the door. We enter in through him. Yes, John 10, 7 to 10. Yeah. John 10, 7 to 10. Can you follow along with us. Yeah. John 10, 7 to 10 says... Then Jesus said to them, Again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, 
he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come to accept to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. So Jesus came to give us the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's right. right. Yeah. And to give it to us more abundantly. Amen. Yeah. And so if we enter in through the door, through Christ, we have access to this abundant life that's made available. Yeah, through, through the Holy, Holy spirit. spirit. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go over to Galatians 4. And uh, we're going to read 1 to 7. I think you were already quoting that this, earlier this evening. Yeah, I think I probably was. Galatians 4. Yeah, if we're in Galatians 4, yes. Yeah, Galatians 4, 1 to 7. Yeah, here we go. Galatians 4, 1 to 7. Amen. Great passage. Galatians 4, 1 to 7 says, uh, Now I say that, that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage to under the elements of the world. But when Jesus, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, uh, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, "Abba, Father." Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. So he's given us the spirit of his son. Yeah. That was the same spirit that he gave up on the cross. That's right. It's finished. And he breathed out his spirit. That's right. That's what it says in yeah. scripture. Yeah. Okay, and John 19 and 30. It shows their status just changed there. You're no longer a slave yeah. to the law of sin and death. Right. You are now a son under the law of the spirit of life. Right. You have access to the spirit of life that will quicken your mortal body, your that's dying right. body. That's right. Amen. I mean, that's not the resurrection body. That's the mortal body. Yeah. You have power and authority in the name of Jesus to pray and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. That's Amen. in Mark chapter 16. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, let's just uh, carry on, unless there's something I'm just going to pop around here and see if there's any other comments. See if there's any questions or yeah. any points of... Uh, 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 okay. So, Jenny, right, well, Jenny is asking, is that verse about giving life to our mortal bodies, is that meant for this life or in the future? Maybe it is both. Yeah, it's, it's both, actually. <laughs> because uh, our eternal life begins right now. Yeah. If you have eternal life, do you know you're still living? <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. Eternal life begins right now by yes. faith, right? Yeah, by faith, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it is for now and for later. Yeah, it's, it's both. both. Yeah. Both. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's a good question, Joe. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. So um, you know, the Holy Spirit brought life out of emptiness in order. For, uh, for there to be creation. So he brought life out of chaos and brought forth creation in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. You want to read that, Curtis? Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 yeah. to 5. It talks Genesis about chapter the one. beginning of creation, as we know, right? The first yep. five verses of the Bible. That's right, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called the night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Right. Amen. Now, unfortunately, you know, uh, I say unfortunately because a lot of people who start to read the Bible at Genesis 1-1, <coughs> don't really understand that this is a picture not only of the natural creation but also of the spiritual creation. God in the natural world, you know, he brought forth light into darkness, right? Right. And he brought forth creation out of chaos. Yes. And he did it through the Holy Spirit who it says in verse 2 the spirit of God was hovering like a dove hovering above the face of the waters. Right? That's right. So, you know, all that darkness and chaos and 
and the waters churning away underneath. Yeah. And the Spirit of God was there quietly doing His work. Yeah. He he's taking His raw materials. He's taking His raw materials yeah. and shaping them into what He right. desires. Now that's what He does in the life of a new believer. Amen. He takes chaos <laughs> and He brings forth a new creation. Amen. He takes one who is lost. They become found. That's right. right. He takes right. one who is a slave and they become a son. That's right. He, he takes one who is a slave and they become a friend of God. Amen. Right? Yeah. Okay, so there's a creation, a new creation that's going on. Jesus called it the new birth or being born from above. Yeah. Or born right. from above by the Spirit of God. That's right. right. That's it. Amen. Amen. So feel free. I know you're into all. Well, the I would just encourage you. I mean, you said it well enough, but I would just add yeah. to it that don't think that God can't use you. Right. If you if he can shape uh, all those swirling waters and chaotic, unformed elements into a perfectly organized universe. Right. Then he can certainly shape your life by the power of the Holy Spirit right. and use you. Don't let that. Uh, that idea of, oh, I'm just too far gone. No, God can remake you. He can make you new. Yes. A new creation. Right. Amen. So I have two passages. I'm not sure we'll get uh, through them both because it's now uh, 740. Oh, yeah. But uh, let's go first to John 3, 3 to 8. We have the discussion between Jesus and Nicodemus, right? And the discussion is about being born again, right? Mm -hmm. And here Christ is in the work of transforming us individually and corporately as we are born of the Holy Spirit into the kingdom of God. Right. Okay, we're no longer in the world of darkness, but we are in the kingdom of His dear Son. Absolutely. Right? So let's read, first of all, John 3, 3 to 8. Okay, so John chapter 3, verses 3 to 8, which says, Jesus answered and said to him, he's talking to Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, that he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Right. Right. So Jesus is talking about being born of the Spirit, but at the same time as being born of the Spirit, there is an ushering into the kingdom of God. Now right. he uses two phrases here. The first one is in verse 3. Where he says, you know, unless you're born again, you cannot even see, spiritually or physically, see the kingdom of God. Right. Okay? Yeah. It, you're blind to it. It's it's in a, a realm or a dimension that you're not able to perceive. Correct. Okay? Then in verse 5, he says, again, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, I believe personally that in this passage he's referring to when he talks about water, he's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about natural birth. Unless you're born naturally into this world, mm -hmm. right? And born of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right. Right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're not... <laughs> You know, we have some people who have this idea there's a bunch of little spirits running around in heaven looking for our bodies to jump into. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Spirits that are in this world, that are not in a body, are here illegitimate. Right, they're illegitimate. Yeah. Yeah. So what we are talking about is that when you're born by, in, by water, you're born naturally. You're, through your mother, you're born naturally. And then, of course, you're born... By, again, by the Spirit of God. Amen. Right? So, uh, unless you had something to add to that. No, nope, I think we'll, so. We'll go over Time to is away on us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses yeah. 17 to 21. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. Yes, and so here we are in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the, wor reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Powerful statement. Any, any comments? Uh, well, we, uh, uh, we have a new identity in Christ. Right. Just as we saw God create the natural earth, we are also made of earth. Yeah. And God creates us as a new creation. It's not a new and improved old me. The old me dies yeah. with baptism in him, and the new me is born of the Spirit. Right. I'm a new creation. Uh, Christ has shaped me. He has formed yeah. me afresh in yeah. his Spirit, in his image. Yeah. Um, all things have, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Yeah. And especially on a day when we feel like everything's kind of mundane and all the <laughs> same, old, same old routine, you need to tell yourself this. Yeah. All things have become new in my life yeah. according to the Spirit. So refresh your mind and your spirit with this. Amen. 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 So let's just, uh, I'm going to just share with you some points quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through the scriptures. Uh, but I want to just share with you that Christian fellowship, as we've been talking about tonight, is found in the love nature of the King Father and His Kingdom. Okay? Jesus is the King of the Kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is the kingdom of the King Father, right? Father yes. God, right? That's right? So Christian fellowship is found in the love nature of the King Father and His kingdom. And you can see that described in John 3, 16 to 21, where Jesus is talking again to Nicodemus, a continuation of that discussion, and He says, For God so loved the world. That's the love nature of the that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever mm -hmm. believeth in him should not perish, but have Amen. everlasting life. Amen. Uh, Christian fellowship is the gift of God, the promise of the Father. So it's going to the next dimension. We're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. And that is given through Jesus Christ, who is the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And when he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, the word baptize is baptizo in the Greek. Uh, you find that 907 in the, um, in the Strong's. And it means to submerge or immerse and to saturate at the same time. Right. So he is doing that work of saturating and filling us with his life. Amen. You know, he's not just submerging us, you know. He's not <laughs> just dunking us. Again, you know, when we talk about baptisms, there's the baptism with water and baptism with the Spirit and right. baptism by fire. Yeah. You know, we're talking about different baptisms, yes, right? That's so, right. Yeah. Um, and as I've already said, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was on loan to these individuals, but in the New Testament, he is a gift of God that's been given to us. You know, he gives us the Spirit of life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, in conclusion, the final point that, again, I don't have the time to go through all the scripture, but Jesus limited himself, right? He had uh, the Holy Spirit without limit, we read earlier in John 3, 34. He had the Holy Spirit without limit, but he did limit himself in certain ways. And I'm going to give you five ways in which he limited himself as we conclude. He emptied himself so we could be full. He limited himself. He poured himself out so that we could be filled. Wow. Okay? Powerful. Secondly, he became poor so that we could become rich. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We have the wealth of eternity available to us yeah. through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Heirs with Christ. Yes. Amen. So the first one was he emptied himself so we could be full. Amen. He became poor so that we could become rich. Number three. He became flesh 
so we could enter the eternal kingdom of God. Amen. He became flesh. John 1, 14, the Word became flesh. When you're the eternal words. God, becoming flesh is kind of limiting. Yeah, yeah. Because you can, can only, only be, be in one place at a time. time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fourthly, he yielded to the law so we could be free. Yes. You know, uh, Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophet, I came to fulfill it, right? He yielded himself to the law. Right. What does it say in Galatians um, 4 and uh, 4? It says that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the, the law. law. Right. Okay? So he limited or yielded, he yielded to the law so we could be free. Right. Right? And then finally the fifth one, he submitted to death so we could have everlasting life. Powerful stuff. Amen. Praise God. So I trust that you're blessed as we move on in the things of God, yes. in fellowship together as we receive and flow in the with the, the governor of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ our Lord and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. And let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight that uh, you are ushering us into the kingdom of God. Mm. Lord Jesus, that as we are born from above, born from a heavenly perspective, Lord, born by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we uh, are able to see and enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. So, Lord, I thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Lord, he came that we could have everlasting life. And, Lord, tonight we thank you for that abundant life that has been made available to us through Jesus Christ our mm -hmm. Lord. Lord, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the thanks. I pray, Lord, that each one watching will be encouraged, blessed, and uh, Lord, uh, edified in the things of God for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I'll thank you for uh, allowing us another opportunity to share the Word of God both in-house and Lord. online. Thank you, Lord, that your Word is going around the globe. That, Lord, uh, that we are proclaiming your gospel, we're presenting yes, your Lord. kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Thank Lord. you Lord. You've made us a new creation. You've uh, remade us. We're completely brand new. Yes, As Lord. if we had never sinned. We've become the righteousness of God only through faith in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so thank you, Father. We become ambassadors that implore people to reconcile to God. Yes, and that, Lord, Lord, we have the quickening or life-giving power of the Holy Spirit yes, in our mortal Lord. bodies. Not just for our own bodies, but through our bodies to other people. Thank that we can Lord. lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We can... Uh, uh, we can see miracles and signs and wonders taking place that will glorify God and edify other people too. Yes, so that what they will see, yes, Jesus rose from the grave and yes, Jesus loves Lord. me. I want to believe in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, let them receive from Jesus. Thank so, Lord, Lord, I thank you, Father, tonight. You just bless each one that's been watching and listening and bless those that would watch in the future, Lord, yes, and Lord. encourage them abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Your glory to, glory to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust that you have a blessed week. Amen. And God willing, we're going to be doing a team teaching and uh, sharing it as well yep. on Thursday night. Yeah. Thanks we're going for to be watching. Continuing on the same theme. Yes. You can join us. Please do. Yes. Thanks. God, God bless. bless.